Xbox One S motherboard. I'll show you what's going on. We just had the motherboard only on this one. And this is from another shop. It looks like they successfully removed the eight. Well, they kind of successfully removed the HDMI port. Uh, some of the anchor point uh, anchor legs are still in there. We're probably going to have to flood those with low melt so we can clean them out. It doesn't look like we have any damage on the pads, which is good. So we won't have to run any jumpers. But that is our job for tonight. This is just a uh, micro soldering job. And I do occasionally get these types of jobs to do. They help make ends meet so I don't turn them down. And I'm happy to do them. Uh, this is a business to business type situation. I wouldn't typically do this for a direct customer. Anyway, let me throw up the temps we'll be using on this in this video. I don't expect I'll have to use the Pico pencil, but again, never know. Actually, I probably will to touch up the pins, so never mind on that. I will probably use all three irons at some point. Okay. Back to microscope. So what I want to do here is probably flood those acre points with low mount and make it a little easier to clean. We might just go ahead and flood the the pads with them just because we'll have a low melt on the iron it anyway so and that will greatly reduce the temperature melting temperature of the solder uh, by greatly reduce I mean greatly reduce get a nice big bead on here let's flood the crap out of these okay. Got my tweezers handy. I might just be able to grab those anchor points right out. Lovely. Uh, let me get rid of that anchor point first before I get crazy over here. And pull right out. Just like that. <sighs> Low melt is a wonderful tool to have around. Some people shied it and talk crap about them but you know how much harder it would be to get those anchor points out of here without it and I just lost that one somewhere I definitely don't want to leave that on the board I'll have to find it I do not want it in there I don't know if there is or isn't so I don't think there is all right and let's go ahead and hit up these guys with it too very good. <laughs> okay, if you make sure I do some work here. Okay, we're going to clean off that iron real good. Alright. Let's apply some fresh looks. And grab our wick. Today we're using tech spray. Still haven't gotten any uh, big goop wick. And that and I'm not in any big hurry because I have plenty of text spray at the moment. So. Lingering in there. You're not staying yet. Get out of my port. Yeah, that is not pointed in an adequate direction. Fume should not be reaching my face. The fume extractor should be getting them, or the fan should be blowing them off. 
There we go. Okay, so pads. I'm using up this wick quite quickly. All right, clean it out and make sure we got everything cleaned up. Throw some solder in that. I can't tell if it's plugs or solder. Well, let's flip it over and we'll take a look at the other side. Yeah, we definitely have some solder on that. We don't want solder there. And we'll touch up the rest of these too. But they got a little bit mangled from this side. That was not our doing. as we can be here. Yeah, our anchor points of our anchor pads have seen a better days. Just want to make sure it's bent out of the way as much as possible because they could interfere with our placement. Let's clean it up. Yep, yeah, looks like somebody who did not have the right equipment attempted to remove this. I need to start prefacing in these videos that I am a professional micro soldering tech and I use professional grade equipment. My irons alone, uh, and this is not a brag, this is just me telling you what's up. My irons alone, uh, with tips, the two dual stations, and the four irons, cost over two grand. Uh, my station, my hot air station, is three or four hundred bucks. You know, we're not using TS100 and A58D stations to do this. The reason why we make it look easy is because one, we do it all the time, and two, we're using professional grade equipment. And for Xbox boards and stuff like that, you're not going to use hobby grade equipment. You're not going to use a $100 Weller station and an A58D, you know, a $56 hot air station to do this work. It's just not going to work. These boards take a tremendous amount of heat to rework. So, again, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just trying to, I, you know, you, you're seeing a lot more... You know, device owners attempting this because we're making it look really easy. And it's not as easy as we're making it look. I'm going to keep sharing the information. I'm going to keep, you know, showing you how to do it. But we need to, pre I'm going to preface it with, I am a professional. I'm using professional grade equipment. Don't expect. I mean, it's not impossible with that equipment. But don't expect it to be easy, because it will not be easy. It dang sure it won't be as easy as I make it look. Or other professionals make it look. So, proceed at your own risk. You know, I'll never tell somebody they can't do something. But, just understand what you're looking at and what you're watching on this channel is a professional micro soldering tech using professional grade equipment straight up okay it doesn't look like it's affected our alignment too much a little off but not catastrophically so we should be able to flow that into place 
As I stated in a earlier video, I am now flowing them into place a bit, kind of like the uh, the uh, Nintendo Switch. Oh, I guess I'll turn the damn station on. And how I achieve this by, without burning is I use rapid air mo rapid movement with my uh, nozzle. And I let the board do the work. Actually, I'm going to change boards because I will burn my hand. Unfortunately, my most comfortable way of doing hot air rework is the way in which I... You want to do what's comfortable, but it's also the way in which I will burn my hand. That's the most comfortable way for me to do it, is to you know, char my hand. So, I wear a thermal protective glove. I'm used to, used to wearing gloves. Wow. That was a topper I had in my beer sitting over there <laughs> that just decided to pop out. Okay, so I want the heat, the uh, accumulated heat on the board to do the work here. And I'm just waiting for those. I'm not keeping the air in any one place for very long. And I should be seeing a more long, a longer uh, runway here. So. And I'm just watching for that sort of the wet. It's beginning to wet now, but not all of it. Some of the ground planes have not. Now we're all wet. One good flow here, and now I'm going to press down and remove the air. Now I'm going to hold it down until it dries. This is exactly how I do a Nintendo Switch board without burning the Nintendo Switch board. Okay, let's take a look, see how we did. Now we're going to touch all these up with a Pico pencil, but as you can see, hopefully, they're all connected to this method. And I don't have to worry about there being a loose pin. And that's why I kind of got, went to this method. You don't see any burnt plastic. Place. Every pin is solid, no burnt plastic, and I've really come to like this method personally. Uh, I started using it because of the Xbox Series X, is you really have to you have to fold in from the top because you have hidden. Uh, joints that you've got to flow in and they're not going to flow in from the bottom very easily so i mean i personally haven't really tried to flow it in from the bottom but i find the on the, from the top method to be fine so i haven't had a need to we're going to put in the anchor points and then we'll come back and we'll touch up those pins there always seems to be one pin uh one anchor point that's receded but it is perfectly flat on the board i assure you otherwise those all those pins wouldn't be flat on the board and connected like they are. So. Okay, we need ourselves a hank of solder. Make contact with the, now let's go ahead and put some solder on the Iron. Heat up that pin. There we go. We're starting to get some meltage. Come on. There we go. 
I said it takes a lot of heat for these boards sometimes. Well. I'm holding it on there for a little bit because I want to get some I want to get good uh, flow through to the other side. Okay. This Hank of Solder is seen his last run. And I need to come at this at another angle because I don't want to burn that plastic. And this is the receded one, so a little more of a challenge. like that. Alright. Look at the other side, see how we did. Plenty on all four. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So let's go ahead and touch up these pins and get a little more solder on them. For this, we will be using our Pico pencil. I guess I will not be using a micro pencil on this one. No, I did use the micro pencil to do the uh, tinning on the. Uh, pads. So, yep, I was right. We'll use every iron on this one. Okay, get a bead of solder on here. I don't want it to be too big. Hey, I have it in view for once. Wanted to climb up the pin. And give us a nice fillet. On the front, I think I climb all the way up the pin, but it makes for a nicer joint, a nicer looking joint when it does. Solder. Solder. This iron performs really well, but it doesn't always hold that much solder. It can only hold so much. All right. Beautiful. Let me show you something real quick. Now, I don't know if you noticed. And the scene on the uh, top left, but I've been 
applying Justin Ashford's, uh, he came up with this method for holding his tweezers and giving himself more steadiness with his tweezers. Well, I've been applying it to holding my iron as well. And I've been putting it through the middle finger and the forefinger and using my middle finger, forefinger, and thumb to hold the iron more steady. And some of you may have seen you know, other videos where I use my tweezer, and that's a good method too. But this has also been very helpful. I've been applying it to, to using my iron, and I really like that uh, the steadiness it gives me on something like that, where I don't want to bridge pins and stuff like that, and I have to clean it up for you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, we're going to fast forward through me cleaning this thing up, but real quick I'll show you. See if I can get you focused. Show you the results, and we'll give you one last results. After we get the fucks off. Cue the music. Okay, one more note for those of you who do not know who uh, Justin Asford is. Uh, he is the uh, content creator on The Art of Repair. So, and if you haven't checked out his uh, channel, you should. Uh, he does great basics uh, information. Uh, he has some great basics videos and great... Uh, explanation of uh, like thermal transfer and how to do BGAs I use his BGA method too so good stuff I'm gonna go get me an ultrasonic toothbrush because of him too thanks Ash Justin for spending my money anyway so let's take one last look Beautiful joints. Alright, that's really all I have for this one. I don't have the unit to to uh, show you that it was successful, but no reason to think it won't be. Uh, I mean, about the only other problem it could possibly have is uh, the re, re timer. And if it does, we'll do a part. I'll, I'll do an amendment to this video. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions about the equipment I used in this video, take a look in the description below. That is professional grade equipment. Just to uh, reiterate, uh, it's all linked down there. Uh, if you like this uh, video, do me a favor and hit the like button uh, on your way out. If you have any questions, by all means, post them on the video and I will answer them uh, whenever I have time. And if you have, I mean, if you like this type of content, if you uh, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, you'll know when I post videos. I do so about twice a week now. And that's really all I had to ask of you. I really appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.